Hello. All right. I'm just gonna wait and see if anybody comes on. And in the meantime, this is gonna bore you if you're watching the replay, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So I went and had my hair extensions done today. How good. I'm just gonna turn that down. And I have show and tell. So I got all the things when I went because they don't want me using the shampoo that I use or the hairbrush that I use. So shampoo and conditioner. Apparently, heat styling product is going to be my new best friend and a new hairbrush. Now, what's interesting about this hairbrush, it's branded, I didn't notice that, is um, the hairbrush that I've been using on my hair cost me about $2 from Kmart about, I don't know, a lot of years ago. And um, I'm so cheap with myself when it comes to things like that, which is just ridiculous and I mean it's been on my list to throw my hairbrush out and now look I have like a proper brush it looks pretty small I think I need something bigger than this but apparently this won't ruin my hair so yeah it's a little bit buffy at the moment I don't like how buffy it is but look look at how long it is they match the color perfectly it was like when she was cutting it we couldn't tell where my hair ended and where the extension started which is pretty bloody cool anyway I think we've spoken at length enough about my hair for probably the last couple of live streams but anyway I now have hair that I'm happy with and even if I do wear a little stinky bun on the top of my head it's gonna be thick and luscious so yeah so anyway in case you've got questions it's Carla Lawson hair extensions in Port Melbourne and it's real human hair from Russia apparently um, no one dies like it's something that they do they they sell their hair um, so and she's the best in the business anyway so that's it enough about my hair all right so today I have come in because I have good hair and I asked what would you like me to talk about today and Lisa stumbled upon a topic that I think is really important she said I'd love to hear your thoughts about the structure outline of a traditional coaching session and things to include in a traditional coaching package or session that clients are asked to do outside session work activities, etc. And so what I want to say, first of all, is there is a distinct difference between coaching and mentoring. And sometimes coaches do pure absolutely pure coaching and other coaches do coaching slash mentoring and the difference is if you're fresh out of coach training well this is the way that I learned it back way back in the day what I learned is that when we are coaching we are not to share advice we are not to put thoughts into anybody's head the only way we are get we are allowed to guide our clients is through good questions through listening feedback asking good questions so if you are a coach a pure coach and you're not mentoring or you're not working in strategy or anything like that then you know you've got it really easy all you need to do is be a really really good listener and um, yeah be a really really good listener and listening for what you know be listening for what's underneath so that you can do that I think the greatest thing for coaches when you're a pure coach is I think the most important thing is just to be ballsy to have courage to have the difficult conversations with your clients some of the biggest breakthroughs you'll have with your clients is when you challenge them on their bullshit mostly um, but you know newbie coaches sometimes feel a little bit um, intimidated to have those tougher conversations but the best thing you can do is that but okay so I want to share and the reason I'm talking about the difference between coaching and the difference between mentoring and you know for me I do some coaching in my coaching but I'm essentially a strategist and a mentor so when my clients come to me it's not just about me asking them good questions and drawing things out they need more from me than that you know they're coming to me because they want strategy they come to me because 
um, you know, they want my opinion. They want it. They want my expertise. That's why they they pay me the money that they do, not for me to go and ask some questions. So obviously, I, I ask as many questions as I can, and I have my um, clients. You know, I, I lead my clients to come up with their own ideas and things like that. But at the end of the day, they're not. You know, they're not investing. You know, five thousand dollars a month or more just to be asked questions. So. And it depends on the coaching that you're doing. But let's, so let's talk about the structure. So the structure of a coaching session back in the day, hey Jane, um, the structure that I would use in my coaching back in the day before I was more of a strategist was, you know, we would start the sessions and it would be, we used to have um, in results coaching systems, we used to have this thing that we started each session with called clearing the space. And I kind of really liked it. It was where, you know, you hadn't seen your client for a week or two weeks or something like that. You'd come in, you'd sit down, or you'd catch up on, you know, line. Back then, it was mostly face to face, and um, the first thing that you would do is there'd be a lot of noise going on, and the idea of clearing the space was about what's going on, what's going on for you. Let's just get it all out. It's almost like a brain dump of everything that's going on, and then from there, it's like, okay, cool. Are you complete? So we would talk about, you know, have you finished with all of this, and now we can get into the coaching session. So I really loved that um, part of those coaching sessions just because we do carry stuff with us into our coaching sessions sometimes, you know, not so much from a, a coach perspective, but from the client perspective. And, you know, it's much like when I was teaching Taekwondo, you know, we would have a moment where, you know, I would talk about, um, hey, Mari, when we when I was um, had my Taekwondo schools and I was instructing Taekwondo, we always paused and took a moment um, to just leave the day at the door and, Go through a process of our loosen up and our warm up and i'd be reminding people let that stuff go this is about being in the moment this is about changing your focus and being in training and not thinking about you know whatever went on at work or with your husband or with your kids or whatever it is and so i like that as a as a, a, a thing in a coaching session too because you know life is busy and i think when we when we create the space for people to um go yeah you know what because what i don't like is so I had a, I'm jumping around a little bit, but when I had a session with a, a coaching client yesterday, um, we got on the call and I can tell they were really distracted. And I just said, are you okay? Is everything okay? And some big stuff had happened. So we had a little bit of a talk about that. And because I'm gonna be conscious of it during the session, they're gonna be conscious of it during the second. They're gonna know I know that something's going on. I'm one of those people you can't hide from me. You know, I know when there's underlying stuff going on, I can pick it up. And so um, we had that conversation, then we could get on and do the work. So holding that space as part of the structure of your coaching session, I think works really well. Um, and then from there, I'm trying to think back because I don't do it this way anymore, but back in the day, so we would clear the space, then, then we would check in with each of the goals. So the results coaching systems model was we would set three goals. We would check in with each of the goals one at a time, work out what what happened um, over the last week with regards to this goal okay where are we at now what acti you know what actions are you going to um, commit to for the next week and then the, the client would write them down um, and they would agree to those then we'd move on to the next goal and then they would we would do a bit of a wrap up and that was basically it so Lisa's question about as far as what homework did I give people to do there was no hard and fast rule. Sometimes it was a journaling, you know, I've always been into journaling. Sometimes it was a journaling exercise. Sometimes it was a, a client, um, a, a conversation they needed to have. It could have been anything. It's really just what comes up in the session and drawing on your experience and drawing on the resources that you have available to you to be able to go, you know, this person needs this, I have this worksheet or I have this video that I want them to watch and then send them away to do it. Um, and so as far as the structure of the coaching package went back then, it was, it was a 12 week coaching package or a 12, it was a 12 part coach, 12 session coaching package. Sorry. Um, so some people would do that over 12 weeks. Some people would do that over six months. Um, and that was basically the structure of it. The first session would be where we do the discovery session, which is where we basically unpack everything that's going on for them and we set the goals. In the second session, we work the strategy. So we work out, okay, so if this is the goal, what needs to happen for you to get here? Again, it was that drawing out from the client of well, what, what you know what you need to do to get from here to here. What are the things that you need to do? And then that would give me a really easy 
um, roadmap to follow for the next nine sessions, which were basically that clear the space, check in with each of the goals, what are you prepared to do, where were you stuck, have those conversations, wrap it up, see you next week. And then at the, the 12th session was really about going down the road of you know, showing them how much that achieved, um, all that sort of stuff, and usually ask them if they wanted to sign up for another session. I don't do things like that anymore, but it really was a great model, for, especially for life coaching. Um, I thought it worked really, really well. And there was that structure because you know for the session that these are the things that you need to do and check off. And um, you know, most um, entrepreneurs and coaches are pretty, you know, we're a bit crazy. You know, we have a lot going on where our energy is high, all that sort of stuff. And we, we're a little bit all over the place. And so we lean into structure because it means that our crazy is not gonna get in the way of doing the job. So the structure was really helpful. Um, and so the structure of um, a coaching session with me these days is very, very different um, because as I say, I'm mostly a strategist. And so um, anything that, so usually I will start the sessions and just go, okay, so what's going on? Like again, it's, it's like an unofficial clearing the space. And that gives my clients a chance to say, you know, this happened with this client or um, I've had a great week or whatever it is and we just have a bit of a conversation about that you know catch up a little bit and then it's like okay what do you need today to be about and that's basically the question that I ask every time what do you need this session to be about and they will tell me you know I need to do my lead magnet or I'm worried about um, you know I'm worried about this offer you know I'm just not sure that it's right or whatever it is and so we just stay in the moment and we do what we need to do. And sometimes it might be, you know what, I wanna teach you how to build a sales page today, or I wanna teach you how to create an email sequence today, or I wanna teach you how to do your graphics a little bit better in Canva or whatever it is. And so my sessions are all on Zoom, so we screen share and we do a bit of a technical, um, hey Tara, and so we do a bit of a technical session. You know, so it's very, very different. It's basically whatever my clients need, I do it. Um, as far as what happens outside of the coaching sessions, um, it's really just, you know, I just expect things to be done. So if my clients have agreed to doing a certain amount of activities that are gonna help them achieve something, I just know they're gonna do it. And I know that if they, they can't do it or they're stressed about doing it or they're overwhelmed or they forgot something, they're gonna ask me and then we just get it done. Um, I have a lot of, with my private coaching clients, the clients that I have in my inner circle, there's a lot of interaction in between our weekly sessions. It's not unusual for me to chat with my clients every single day um, with my inner circle clients because that's just the way we hang out. There's not very many of them. I keep it very small. Um, there's one more spot available at the moment. Um, so I keep it very, very tight just because I want to be able to give that level of service. But as far as what we cover in the sessions, it's very dependent on what is the goal that we have going on right now? Um, so for some people, it might be launching their group program. Hey, Georgia. Um, for others, it might be they're about to run an event or for others, they're gonna run their first, um, hey, Em, they're gonna run their first um, you know, webinar or something like that. So it really just depends on what it is that is the goal at the time. But the thing that I never, that is never different is with my clients, I always, at the beginning, get really clear on like, what is, yeah, I know, it's pretty good, huh? Um, the first thing that I do is I get really clear, help them get really clear on what is possible for them. Like, what is the big picture here? Because I wanna know that. I wanna know what the big picture is because I know they're gonna get lost in the detail at some point, which is what you have to do. You know, if I'm saying, I need you to go and do these things and, you know, do this thing, they're gonna do it and they're gonna be in worker bee mode. They're gonna be head down, ass up, doing what they need to do. And sometimes when you're in that worker bee mindset, you forget that you have this big vision and you forget, you know, all of this activity is leading to something. So whenever I can feel them getting overwhelmed or I can feel them going off on a tangent, which happens a lot, a lot of the times clients will come in and they're really clear with, with their vision and then they're like, you know what, I think I might do this other thing or you know what, I've been thinking I might try this thing and I'm like, but remember this? Remember when we started out and this was the goal? What's changed? And they'll be like, oh, nothing's changed. It's just I forgot. You know, so for me it's about really making sure that they don't forget the big picture and it's really holding them to that. And so if they come to me with some crazy ass idea, which happens a lot of the time, I'll always take them back to, um, 
but what about this thing? And they're like, oh yeah, that's right. Because for me, it's maintaining focus. My number one priority with my coaching clients is helping them maintain focus. I want them to be focused. I want them to keep this, you know, I want them to be, you know, I can do that with the best of them, um, but it doesn't get you anywhere. It's like we have one focus and we go all in with this one focus. And then when we've achieved that thing, then we work on the next thing, which, you know, not, not always is um, mapped out and predicted. Like, you know, we know when we achieve this, we're gonna do the next thing. It's more fluid than that because, um, you know, I'm not big on, I'm not big on trying to build a whole shopping complex when I don't even know what the first shop's gonna be. You know what I mean? Like, that's a bad analogy, but you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I wanna know, let's just try this now and let's just get this working. And then when they're like, yes, I love this. This is all I want to do. It's like, okay, cool. Now I know we need to scale from this place. But if they come in and they're, you know, wanting to do a number of different things or, um, you know, we get started and they're like, yes, I love this. This is what I want to do. This is the package I want to sell. And they might get into it for a little while and they'll be like, oh, I don't know that this is a thing. And it's like, cool. And then I'll challenge them on that because a lot of it, maybe it's because they're not making sales fast enough or they've got a couple of clients that are a pain in the ass when it's not about what they're doing, it's about the, the clients that they've taken on. And so then I'll just really challenge them and make sure they really don't wanna do this anymore or whether it's just because there's a few circumstances that are coloring the enjoyment of it. And so, um, yeah, and that's what I do. And then I just get them back on track and focus. But if they, like I say, we don't map out the whole big plan. You know, we always know when my clients come with me, they always know that we want to create a high ticket coaching package. We want to create some scale, scalable business model. There's a, you know, there's a few multiple, there's a few income streams that we want to generate. We don't ever want to just rely on one product, but we don't know what they're all going to be at the beginning because, hey B, um, because so many things change and they change really really quickly and it's better to have a lot of change in the beginning while you're wriggling into your sweet spot and trying to work that out than it is to um, build out everything and then get in it and then um, I'll come back to that Tara um, and then work out they don't really want it you know what I mean and, and then we have to go backwards and reinvent the wheel and I've got to redo websites and stuff like that so it's about let's just work out what this is, see how much you're enjoying it, see, you know, and all the rest of it, and then we can scale from there. So Tara said, do you give your clients contract initially to sign? Um, always, always, always have a contract. Um, but that's only after we've done a discovery call and um, they've agreed to the terms and conditions. So it's basically, this is how I work. So I have, um, I've got a program actually, it's, I need to make it available on my website, but it's called Coaching Business Systems and it's basically all of the things that I use to, in my business to you know, create client agreements and, and all that sort of stuff. But I use um, Signable, I've got a contract or a, a client agreement that is uploaded into Signable that I can change each time and then my clients sign that stuff um, online. So I have a copy, they have a copy and there's a copy online. Um, you just can't be too careful these days. I think it's just better to do it. It's just always better. And one of the things that I talk about in that program, which is the coaching business systems, is that um, the last thing that you wanna do is go into a coaching program and then have not had something signed and then you're distracted by that the whole time. Like what if things turn to shit and I haven't had them sign anything? So really important to make sure that you get your ducks in a row and have all of that stuff. But the answer is yes. Um, but it's not like I had them sign up and sign this thing on the same day. I'm not, um, I'm not a big advocate these days so much of um, having people sign up and pay on the day because I want to give people space. If they're in, they're all in. And if I don't, so basically I'll say, okay, cool. I'm going to send you the client agreement. I'll send you the invoice, and then you can pay it and blah blah blah. I want to give them space between saying yes and actually paying because I know that when they're in and they're, they're paid, they're all in. They're not going to say to me later down the track, which happens with a lot of coaches, um, you know, I was under pressure to sign up on the day, so I signed up and I didn't really want it, which is bullshit. I mean, people have to take responsibility for their own decisions. We're all grown-ups here. Um, no one's holding a gun to anybody's head um, to get them to sign up, you know what I mean? But people can be assholes. 
Um, okay, so um, Mari said, thanks for the insight. About, yeah, uh, keep the questions coming because I'm just going to ramble otherwise um, about signing. Do you keep track of your client sessions, etc., by using coaching software? I do a couple of things. I don't use software. Um, I have a spreadsheet and I mark all the sessions off. There are session notes and things like that. But the main thing that I do is um, all of my sessions are ran th run through Zoom and I record every single session and I save every single session because I, you know, I've got um, notes on my calendar. I've got a record of all the calls that are taken. I keep records of everything. Um, only because I've been bitten before by people who have tried to say they never received coaching and all the rest of it and they, you know, I had records of everything so they didn't get very far. But unfortunately, you know, there are people out there who will try to do that stuff. And so I always just want to cover my ass and make sure that, um, you know, ducks are in a row. I know where everything's at. Um, and yeah, it takes up a bit of storage space and all the rest of it. But I now just save the audio files. I don't save the videos and um, they're dated and all the, with the name and the session and all the rest of it on it. So if anyone wants to dispute anything, it's like, oh, I have a file. <laughs> I remember exactly what I said. So um, yeah, I just make sure that I do that. Um, Tara said, I do a feedback summary where I write what was discussed. Yeah, I don't do that. I just think um, my clients are adults. You know what I mean? Like make your own notes. <laughs> I'm not, it's not up to me to be a mum. It's not up to me to, um, you know, write out your list of things to do. Like you're an adult, take ownership over it, just do it. Like we don't even, no one would ask me to do that in a coaching session. They just wouldn't know not to do it. It's just like, you know, you know how to take notes and get your shit together. Um, do you get feedback from them? I don't um, because I know if I'm doing a good job. I just know if I'm doing a good job. And if I think that something's not right or I think if I think someone's pissed off or something like that, um, I'm just like, what's going on? Like, but usually, you know, it's, usually that doesn't happen. Um, Mara's just said, oh my God, thanks for that. So that's something I'd never think of. How can people do that? Yes, yeah, lack of taking ownership and responsibility. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I mean, the whole point about coaching is we want our people to eventually be, um, it's like we're teaching them to fish. Do you know what I mean? Like I want my, like my clients, the ones that work with me over time, they can whip up a sales page, they can use lead pages, they can hook up an email sequence. You know, they can do a lot of stuff. They can do a lot of stuff. And it's because I'm teaching them how to fish. And I think that's really important because at some point I want to be obsolete. You know, I, I think that, you know, my job as a coach is to always be ahead of my clients so that I'm always learning something. I'm always testing things ahead of time so that when something works for me, the first thing, the next thing I do is go, okay, guys, we need to do this with your business or this is the thing you need to launch or this is how we're going to do it or whatever. Um, so, you know, that's, but essentially, you know, you are going to become obsolete at some point. And it's just natural that, relationships run their course you know and it's just the way that it is I don't get hung up about it you know if a client's ready to move on then that's fine you know what I mean it's it's like usually I'm ready before they are um, but sometimes that's just the way that it is you know um, yeah any other questions so that went a little bit kind of all over the place I'm just trying to see if I can really cover that so she was talking about the structure and outline so structure really for each coaching session, um, there really isn't any for me other than asking at the start, um, what's going on? What do you need from this session? And then as we finish up, do you need anything else from me? Do you know what you need to do? Do you need anything else from me? That we all say goodbye and that's like, okay, I'm here if you need me in between. And that's really how it goes. And then I'm just relying on me, you know, and that's what, I love about coaching and that's what I love about you know the business that I'm in I get to rely on what I've got between my ears I don't need equipment I don't need anything else I just know my shit and I just need to rely on that you know and I just tap into that and having done this for so many years um, I have a lot of experience you know I if I haven't experienced it someone I've coached has or some of my peers have and I just I just know a lot and I've experienced a lot and I've been around conversations where other coaches have experienced different things. And so, um, you know, I just lean into that stuff. I just know my stuff. 
and you guys would know your stuff too and if you don't if you feel like you're out of your depth then you've got to scale back what you're doing so that you feel bulletproof in your confidence so if you're if you take on a client for example and you kind of feel like oh I think I'm out of my depth here why why do you feel like you're out of your depth what is it about this client what is it about this this thing that you've taken on that maybe you're not as confident as you could be or you just shouldn't have offered it in the first place you know there have been clients that come to me that I know are earning a lot a lot a lot a lot of money and I used to think in the day well, what are they gonna learn from me you know they're already earning more money than me but it's not about money it's about you know and, and it never ceases to amaze me that I I have these clients that sign up that are rolling in it they've been earning a big money for years and years um, but they don't know coaching you know they don't know the business of coaching they don't know the strategy behind building um, a coaching business and they don't you know they I just do it very differently you know and so yeah and now I see my value that I don't doubt it at all I know if somebody comes to me and they want to work with me it's because they know I have value um, and that's what you need to do as well be really confident in the value you bring so with coaching you are not telling them what to do they are telling you what they want to do yeah so Tara I think you jumped on a little bit after the start but I'm, I'll, I'll go over it again so I'm a strategist these days so I am telling them what to do a lot of the time and how to do it because it's not pure coaching if I was purely coaching I would be doing that I would be leading them to their own answers and all the rest of it um, but I I'm a coaching business strategist so it's like I know the business of coaching I know coaching and I know how to be a good coach and how to teach people to be a good coach but ultimately I, I know how to create the strategy to make money in coaching um, that's basically what I do so I'm telling them what to do but if I'm dealing with a client who has you know they're dealing with their own bullshit or they're making excuses or whatever that's pure coaching I'm not gonna tell them you're doing this because of this I'll be asking questions so has this happened before why do you think this is going on like what's what's going on or if I'm getting a lot of excuses or anything like that I'll be like what's going on here like what is going on underneath all of this stuff because it sounds like it's not this it sounds like it's something else and so that is really how I yeah so I do both but um, the short answer God I can't do short answers these days um, the short answer is I'm telling them what to do um, as well as asking them good questions and leading them to things in different areas but for the business strategy part it's just tell them what to do and then of course check in and make sure that they're aligned with it because if they're not it'll never work um, and you know not everything that works for me will work for my clients because it's, it's I'm a different person than they are but what I'm good at doing is helping them to extract the thing that works for them so that they will keep moving and they will do the job that they need to do um, is there a course um, what sort of course um, like a coaching training course Tara because I am gonna do that I am gonna do a coaching skills intensive but right now the program that I've got running at the moment is um, something that I can read more about yeah okay so um, I don't at the moment I don't have a coaching skills program but I, I'm gonna run one soon um, the program that I've got running at the moment I'm just gonna see if I've got the where the hell is it is um, hang on a minute I'll pop it in there but I have a program coming up it's a seven-day intensive and it is basically how to um, build a Facebook group where you fill it with people who are spending money my group is not big you'll see there's on there's under 250 people in it but it's very very um, busy and it's also um, where I make a lot of money every single month through this coaching um, group so I'm the program that I'm running um, is going to be about how to create a Facebook group um, and content delivering content that sells um, any recommendations for books for coaching training I've been out of the loop for such a long time I've been doing it for such a long time that no um, not on coaching training specifically yeah that's right exactly right Tara um, if you've got the right people so I'm just gonna drop that link in now with the program it starts next Wednesday and it's one of my cheaper programs because it's just seven days but it's blow up your coaching business um, blow up your coaching business with Facebook groups and um, content that sells 
I'm already studying coaching hypnosis and NLP and when I finish I definitely need you to have the busy yeah um, thank you um, thank you Mari yeah the coaching training um, you know I've really looked at this and this is I'm actually considering doing a coaching certification program or a licensing program um, later in the year because what I know is a lot of people here's what it is I'm very real and honest about what it takes to be a coach and people go through coaching training and they come out and you know no disrespect to anybody but they think it's all kind of rainbows and freaking unicorns and you sold the idea that finding coaching clients is really easy um, and technically it is like it's not a difficult thing but people under they nobody's training just how much of your own shit you're confronted with when you come out of training and you're not you know you do your fr and I actually also think that coaching people for free when you come out it does you the worst disservice um, because that's when you get into this mind frame and people freak out about when they actually have to start charging it's like you you have a skill you weren't an idiot before you went into coach training you went into coach training because you already had something going on you just wanted to put a framework around it and I almost feel like when you come out of coaching training when they're telling you to go and do free coaching for however many hours um, you just go backwards you know because then you and then yeah so I just think we're not taught enough about the actual business of coaching um, I don't think we're taught enough about the mindset that smacks you in the face when you come out of coaching training and then you try to make money from this thing um, because it doesn't matter how you know and this is another like I'm going off on another tangent but there's one particular coaching school and I I know I went to that coaching school when I was looking for a life coach just for the fun of it and I was also looking at um, discovery call processes I wanted to see you know what what the industry looked like for life coaches how they were doing discovery calls and um, none of them had any idea like I did a few and these were the ones that I actually could be bothered booking discovery calls with because the booking system was such a shit show that it was like it was all too hard so I couldn't be bothered but um, you know these coaches were so self-conscious they were there was too much of them in the coaching calls instead of making it about the client and it's you know I they weren't doing the wrong thing it's just that they were so inexperienced and you know when you, you when you talk to you scripts and all the rest of it it just never feels right and so yeah I'm thinking of running some sort of or developing some sort of coaching training it'll either be like a licensed thing so you can become a coach under me or it'll be an ongoing membership program where we do work on the business of coaching and coaching skills um, so that you feel confident as a coach because that's really important um, because then you're gonna have this ongoing training I'm gonna teach you how to build your business and also the other so I'm thinking it's probably gonna be an ongoing membership program for a little while and then when I've done that for a little while I'll look at a coaching licensing program but I just think coaches need more skills in um, building their businesses and also just being really confident coaches I think yeah and it doesn't come from just doing lots of free coaching it just doesn't come from that it might help your coaching skills but it, it makes your business skills suck and then you know by the time you get around to doing that you're not going to have any clients so then your coaching skills decline anyway so I just don't think it's a good model um, so I want to teach you guys how to do both I want to teach you how to really go for it really own your stuff really feel confident as a coach know you can get a result um, and then um, you know build your business at the same time almost like a reflective 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 practice kind of almost yeah yeah almost um, almost but I think it's it's more I the, th the thing that I have a problem with um, yeah it, it, it does Tara but you know what when you're a new coach if you're trying to use a structure and a framework that feels foreign to you you forget that you're not confident 
just in the, you know, you, you think that you're not confident, but you're just not confident in the structure. And when you become so self-conscious of getting the structure right and doing it the right way, then you lose everything. Because the, the thing that, that is your greatest asset as a coach is your ability to really listen to what's going on underneath and observe that stuff, feed the information back and draw your clients out to come to better conclusions and, and make better decisions and all the rest of it. So yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a big conversation. This could go a, a really long time, but yeah, I just, I just think it can be done better. Um, and so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think it's, I've been playing around with a couple of different models for um, an ongoing membership program that I'm gonna launch. And I think it is gonna be, it's gonna be that ongoing thing rather than a licensed thing that will maybe come later. But I just think we can do better. Um, and I've been doing it long enough to know that I can do it better than most people. And be real about it you know I'm not saying it's you can't create a thriving coaching business I did I did off from day one but um, I think there's a lie told about how easy it's gonna be and there's a lot of things that are not alluded to that um, hit you in the face when you come out of coaching training and you're unprepared for and then it sends you in a bit of a loop and then um, from there it takes you a little bit while a little while to get back on the horse and then you know you've lost momentum and all that sort of stuff I don't, I don't know the statistics, but I imagine there are a lot of coaches who pay for coaching training um, and then might do a couple of free sessions, you know, a couple of free coaching programs with people and they never make a month, never make a cent out of coaching. And yeah, so the thing, I think this is the train of thought I had before. Um, it's almost like people go to coaching training and then forget they were brilliant before they went in there. It's like... You're a smart person before you went into coach training. You knew you knew something. You know you had a knowing about something because you wanted to go and be a coach, and you were confident you would be a good coach. So why do so many people come out of coaching training, have their first go at it, and then they their confidence dies? It's because they're attached to the system and trying to do it right, and because they think it's gonna be easier because that's what they were led to believe, and then they realize how difficult it is. So yeah, anyway, that's a bit of a rant, and I can go on and on about that, and yeah. But, so stay tuned, I am gonna have some sort of a membership program around that. But, in the comments, you'll see, I'll pin it to the top when I finish this call, but there's also um, the, the um, I don't even know what system is, Say that again, I don't even know what system is LUL. What's LUL? Would you not advise free sessions to build up? I wouldn't do free sessions. I don't think I did free sessions. I think I even charged my mum. I think my mum did one of the first coaching packages with me and I charged her. <laughs> we got a really good result. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do doctors go and operate on people for um, free when they get out of... Do lawyers go and just, you know... Do mechanics just go around randomly fixing people's cars for free? You know? What the system is. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like, think about it. Like, do hairdressers just go around cutting people's hair just because they want to, just for free, because they're not experienced? So, yeah, why should we do it when nobody else is doing it? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, no, no, don't say don't do the training. You need the, I don't know. We, message me, we'll have a chat, Tara, okay, before you make any rash decisions. Um, but you might not need to. You might not need to. But um, definitely shoot me a message and we can have a chat. I don't want you to go off and make any decisions just off this um, because I don't know you. I don't know your situation. And, you know, but you may have been really successful at something and, um, all I'm saying is, so you're saying you might not go and do the coaching training, Tara. Because all I'm saying is don't make any decisions about not doing coaching training off the back of this. Um, because I don't know you, I don't know kind of where you're at. But, but if you are someone that was really successful at something, so I have a lot of clients that come to me who have been successful in other things. And then they've created a lot of success and it's like, and they want to coach around that. I don't think they need to go and do coaching training. They just need a coach to show them how to structure those sessions and help them to get results for their clients. 
Um, I don't think they necessarily need to go to coaching training, but if you have never, if you're not teaching something that you already know, and you just heard of this thing called coaching as a profession, and you think you need to go and get some coaching training because you love the idea of it, then it's probably gonna be a really good fit for you. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, anything else? Any other questions? There is a lot of activity going on on my Facebook page because I've got hair, got good hair. This hair better be good for business, I tell you, because it cost a bomb. Um, but you know what's, I don't think I need training. I think I need a coach. Well, message me, Tara, because I'm available. Um, the only issue is, you know, when I start to, when I, I never post a lot of selfies on my page, and when I do, all the freaks come out. Yeah, anyway, any other questions? Any other questions? But Tara, message me. Message me. Um, I'll look in my other folder. Even for, I'll just, even no nobody likes to go into their other folder. I know we're not friends um, I will check it just in case but um, shoot me a message because it may just be that you need coaching we can do a discovery call if you like and um, just have a chat and see if, we're, if, if what you need I'm not gonna you know take you on as a client if I think you really need coaching school or whatever so we'll just have a chat just to help you get clear um, yeah so I hope that was a bit of a ramble I hope there was a bit of something for everybody I think um, so I hope that helped but as far as structure goes you know, there's not a lot. My, 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 the actual packages that I have have structure. So I know it's like the 5K formula is a four week program and the whole structure around that coaching package is we create your $5,000 coaching offer and I show you how to sell it and where to go to get your first sale. That's the whole premise of that program. And then my inner circle program is basically, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're going to create two other income streams and Pardon me, over six months I'm gonna teach you everything that I know. So that you are really very, um, you know, you're switched on and you know exactly how to, how to be really um, strategic in your coaching business and how to just go and make money win. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. Um, all right guys, I've gotta go. I've got things to do, but um, it's good to have so many of you on the call today. If you think of any other questions, let me know. Okay, bye.